Hello, today we're going to um, take a review of a cholesterol test. What we'll do is go through my cholesterol uh, test from about a year ago um, out of our medical chart and look at uh, what that means. I'm not going to interpret my values quite so much as I am just use these as, a, um, as an opportunity to uh, talk about cholesterol values. We're looking at total cholesterol. LDL, or bad cholesterol, direct uh, HDL, HDL or good cholesterol, triglycerides, um, <clears throat> non-HDL cholesterol, basically that's just where you add up uh, uh, the total cholesterol and subtract the, uh, the HDL from it. Apolipoprotein A1, apolipoprotein B. Uh, APO uh, A1 is the best of the HDL uh, particles, and APO B is the worst of the LDL particles. Then you want to look at the APO uh, A over APO B ratio. S small dense LDL and LP little a. So let's go through these <coughs> and talk about what they what they are, what they mean. When we're talking about what they are, one of the first things to think about is what are lipoproteins? They are proteins which the body uses to make cholesterol go into small particles. Let me show you what I mean. I've done this on a couple of other videos, but here's uh, just a uh, plastic bottle of water, some Kroger olive oil, and when I pour this olive oil into the water, what happens? Well, you get these big blobs, right? Well, <clears throat> you know what? If you eat a, uh, a burger, it's got fat in it. If you eat a milk, take a milkshake, or even something healthy like a salad with good olive oil in it like this, uh, if, it, if it forms a big blob like that, that's the last thing that you want to happen to you, and it is the last thing that will happen to you, because a big blob of oil like that will kill you. That blob, that actually happens in medicine. It's called a fat embolus. Embolus just means clot, and um, fat clots do kill people. They kill them in major trauma where you have, you know, you're traveling 60 miles an hour and you run into a bridge. You break multiple bones. The fat inside those bones comes out and flows into the bloodstream, forms in these big clots like this. Not this big, this is a big clot. Uh, but that's, you know, you can get that dose of fat in a, in a large meal. Um, those big clots will kill you. So you shake it up and you get these very small uh, fat particles. But we'll hold, actually you can see now, uh, very quickly, this, these small particles start to coalesce again to form that big particle, that embolus. Now how do we keep our, how does our body keep that from happening? Again, we're uh, going right back to that embolus and death. Well, lipoproteins, the body makes proteins and these proteins form circles around very small particles of the fat. So, now that you understand a little bit more about what a lipoprotein is, so let's go back and review real quick. HDL is the good uh, lipoprotein. We'll talk about why that's good. It's a high density. We'll also talk about why it's high density. And LDL, uh, low density and bad. Let's, actually, let's go take a look at that real quick. <clears throat> For the most part, the difference between HDL and LDL is the uh, got that upside down huh? is the um, the amount of protein. So these are the particles that the body forms. Uh, these proteins form these little uh, what we call polar um, uh, components on the outside. In other words, polar is uh, water is polar, and our blood is not over 90% water. So you want a polar uh, external capsule 
and the fat or nonpolar stuff is in the middle. We'll talk about that again a little bit later. But again, the major difference between HDL and LDL is that LDL has a lot less protein and a lot more fat. 25% or less protein uh, in this particle and 50% or more protein in the HDL. So this is cholesterol. These are triglycerides and fats, and these are proteins. So, <clears throat> why does uh, why is HDL good and LDL is bad? Well, number one, HDL because it's denser. Protein is more dense than fat. It's able. Uh, it's the liver is able to pull that out of the blood. The LDL, however, continues to float around in the blood. <clears throat> this is another version. Another image of LDL. Here's the protein. Here's the polar uh, uh, surface and the apolar core, the fats. The polar surface is made of a thing called phospholipids. That's part of the part of the pro, uh, what the protein <clears throat> assembles to keep that particle in that formation. So we talked a little bit about HDL, a little bit about LDL, and you'll get this, you'll see this image sometimes. Uh, LDL is coming out dumping uh, fats in the artery walls, or the arteries, and HDL is coming in and pulling those fats out. And again, that's, uh, there's some truth to that image. So we want a higher HDL and a lower LDL. <clears throat> While I'm thinking about it, well, I'll mention this uh, quick uh, ratio down at the bottom, the HDL over LDL, I mean triglyceride over HDL ratio. Um, <clears throat> in, with high blood sugar and high insulin states, you have um, insulin stops you from forming triglyceride, I mean burning triglycerides, so your triglycerides continue to increase. Meanwhile, with these high triglyceride values and high fat values, your HDL, remember in this, in this image, your HDL sees more of these uh, fats, and so it's harder at work. And you're, when, you, uh, when the HDL picks up a lot of triglycerides or fats, it um, no longer is an HDL. So in a high insulin state, a high um, glucose state, you get burning of your HDL and increase of your triglyceride because you're not burning triglyceride. So you get a high triglyceride over HDL ratio. Again, that's one of the major tip-offs for insulin resistance. Now, a few minutes ago I said for the most part, the difference between HDL and LDL is the um, the, the size and the amount of protein. Uh, we'll refer back to this uh, image uh, in a few minutes. The actual protein within HDL and LDL is slightly different. And I'll show you that in a, in a few minutes. This is an old uh, image from Berkeley Health Labs. This helps us understand some things. We think of LDL as large and fluffy and Therefore, that's what's causing the problem. That's not really the case. It's these small, dense LDLs that cause the problem. And they cause the problem because they're able to uh, go through the cracks of the, uh, the endothelium, the intima. The HDL are these very small ones. These large, fluffy ones don't cause that much of a problem either. The real problem is these. Another thing to think about is LP little a. We've mentioned that a couple of times. You see on this image, there's a little hook-like thing hanging off the LP little a. We'll take a little bit deeper look at that in a few minutes. But that hook is, is thought to be the mechanism for LP little a causing more atherogenesis or sticking to the uh, endothelial wall and uh, platelet uh, coagulation. So again, LP little a, which we mentioned in there, is uh, a higher risk form of uh, LDL 
protein. <clears throat> Again, uh, back to the comment about APOA and APOB and the statement that for the most part, the difference between uh, LDL and, and uh, HDL is the percent of protein. Like I said, there's a slight difference in the type of protein as well. So, <clears throat> these populations, remember the bigger populations, the LDL populations that I showed on this last slide, last image, all of these have um, APOB uh, type of protein in them, and the HDL population has more of the APOA protein. Uh, let me see if I can get this straight. So this is APOA, lipoproteins, and APOB. A couple of things. So we've talked about, we know what proteins are. We, now we know what lipoproteins are. APO basically just means the protein component of a lipoprotein. So, <clears throat> when we're looking at uh, APOA1, and uh, APOB in that cholesterol test, APOA1 is the most uh, protective of the uh, HDL protein, lipoproteins, and uh, APOB1. So APOB over uh, APOA1, that's the uh, very predictive ratio in terms of risk. Uh, you saw that in my test. Um, those are the most uh, predictive. A A APOB is the most uh, uh, the most dangerous of the LDL particles, and APOA1 is the most protective. Quick mention on uh, LP little a. So LP little a is that's again just one of the protein one of the families of proteins that uh, forms these lipoproteins and it's a type it's a genetic uh, variation basically some of us have a high LP little a others don't it's this um, hook of Kringle repeats that hangs off of the particle that seems to cause the problem. <coughs> Let's go back and put some of these together. Um, this is another version of uh, HDL and LDL. As you see, the, um, the lipid core, cholesterol, triglycerides, uh, the protein going through here holding the uh, phospholipids together. Um, on the H, uh, HDL, you get APOA1. <clears throat> Over here on the LDL, uh, you get the APOB. Uh, you also get uh, APOE is in here somewhere. Remember APOE? APOE is one of these types of proteins as well. Remember APOE, you can see two, three, or four. Those of us that have one copy of uh, APOE4 have a significantly higher risk for um, dementia, uh, heart attack and stroke, but mostly dementia and two copies of APOE4, a much higher risk uh, for dementia. So again, that's what APOE is as well. APOA, B, and E. Um, <clears throat> remember we mentioned uh, LD, small dense LDL, and why are they uh, dangerous? Well, here's where, the, here's where they get dangerous. Uh, this is the this is a diagram of the uh, artery, the artery wall. You've got blood flow going here. This is the intima or uh, endothelium. This is the uh, media or uh, muscle layer, and here is where plaque gets laid down. And how does plaque get laid down? Well, when you have increased uh, uh, glucose or you have inflammation for another cause you get some breakage of these endothelial cells. When they get inflamed and broken, you get um, the small dense LDL flowing through here and it stops. 
then it forms a plaque. And as we've talked about in other videos, that plaque attracts white cells, what we call cytokines, other inflammatory processes, and then become, can become a, uh, an inflamed, dangerous plaque. So, <clears throat> the whole idea here today was to do a review of a cholesterol test. Let's go back and look at my uh, cholesterol test and see if we have a little bit different view of it. Uh, total cholesterol, LDL, we talked about different, a lot of different versions of LDL, including small, dense LDL. Uh, we talked about HDL and how LDL deposits fat, HDL cleans it up. Triglycerides, uh, a component of that core along with uh, cholesterol. Triglycerides also don't get burned when uh, we have a high insulin state uh, associated with insulin resistance or uh, hyperglycemia. Triglyceride over HDL. HDL does get burned up quickly as it tries to pull that... Uh, fat, those fat deposits out of the artery walls. So a high triglyceride over HDL is a, a significant warning sign for insulin resistance. Um, apolipoprotein A, remember that's the, um, the apolipoprotein, that's the protein within the lipoprotein. This is in the HDL family and more cardioprotective. ApoB, on the other hand, is within the uh, LDL family. And what we're looking for is a ratio of those two, uh, a, a low APOA, or, or a, we want to have high APOA1 and low uh, APOB. As you see, I have relatively low APOA1 because I have insulin resistance. Um, <clears throat> my uh, APOB over APOA ratio is low, though, because I have a a uh, fairly low ApoB. That's been my profile forever. Um, <clears throat> small dense LDL, you remember those are another way like L ApoB of looking at the most dangerous population. That population, the smaller, denser LDL population that can get through the cracks in the endothelium. Again, a uh, long video, but I hope it was able to uh, give you some images and some uh, better ability to interpret your cholesterol test.